Depending on your requirements, you might not always need a state machine. There are tons of different ways that you can manage states in React, some of them simpler than others, and I'm going to walk you through when to use each one in this video. The first type of state management to be aware of is simple value switches. Here we've got a toggle component where we have an is toggled on piece of state which we're getting from React. When this button is clicked, we set is toggled on to the opposite of whatever is toggled on currently is. In other words, we toggle it. And we change the color of the button and the text of the button based on what the toggle status is. You can see it working here. When I click this button, it toggles on and toggles off whenever I click it. Here you've got a difference between where the state lives and where it's declared and where the actual logic lives because the actual logic for how it behaves is separately declared to the state up here. What this means is that as this component grows and gets bigger, then these two things are going to get further apart unless you manage it really, really well. A way to solve this problem is to use reducer. A reducer is a function which takes the current state and an event and then tells you what the next state should be. So here we're saying if the event we receive is a toggle, return the opposite of the current state, which is a boolean. In other words, toggle the current state. We're starting out in the false state, so we're not toggled on yet. Our button here, instead of having the logic inside it, all it does is it just sends an event up to the reducer. This means that the logic is all in one place and we don't need to go through our entire component to figure out how everything works. And our button, you can see, is still working here clicks on and clicks off in exactly the same way. This paradigm is incredibly powerful because as you can see, it makes some parts of your app smart and some parts of your app dumb. Down here, this is just a dumb button sending an event to the toggle state at the top. And in here, this is where the smart stuff actually lives. Here's a diagram to show you what I mean. In the use state example, as the component gets bigger and bigger, the smart sections that are actually related together are going to get further and further apart. But in the use reducer component, the smart sections are going to stay co-located together and the dumb stuff is going to move further and further down. What this means is when you're looking at a code base, you can prioritize your attention, looking for the smart stuff first to understand how it works and then looking at the dumb stuff to actually see the implementation. The trouble is, is that user reducer doesn't catch all of the smart stuff, only some of it. Here, we've actually changed our requirements so that when we toggle on this button, it actually goes into a sort of loading state and then it fetches some data from an API. So again, when I turn it off, it's going to load a different bit of data now. So how are we going to figure this piece of code out? Well, let's look for the smart stuff first. We've got this reducer here, which now accepts two different events, either a toggle event or a fetch complete event. You can see that the state up here now has an is loading boolean. When we receive the toggle event, we go into is loading true. And when the fetch completes, then we save the data, we set is loading to false, and we finally toggle the button. But where is the actual fetch being done? Oh, it's being done all the way back down here in the dumb section again. So here is now where the meat of our app is actually doing the work. It sends a toggle event, it goes and fetches the response, and then it grabs it and sends it back to the reducer. So our diagram needs a bit of updating. Use reducer does some smart stuff at the top of the components where it co-locates all the state logic together. But anytime you have any side effects in your application, so you know fetching or timers or things like that, they need to live outside of the reducer further down in the component. It would be amazing if we had something where we could co-locate all of the side effects and the state logic all together and leave the rest of the component to be completely dumb. We can get a little bit closer to this by moving our effects into our state and making them more declarative. Here I'm describing all the possible effects in my state and this one is fetch data. When we receive the toggle event, we say that effects is now going to be fetch data. When the fetch is complete, we just reset them. Now what we do is we listen for the state.effects in a use effect. And for each effect, we run that effect based on what's happening. So here we have state.effects.foreach. If the effect is fetch data, then make the fetch and then send it when it's complete. This does mean that the logic is taken out of this piece of code and it becomes dumb again, which is good. But this use effect still lives separately to the reducer that's up here. We're getting closer then. We still have a separation between our smart state logic and our smart effects down here, and our component is getting dumber, which is good. For many situations, this will be the way to go. 
but still in a big component, this is not quite gonna do the job because you can still imagine lots of code in here and lots of code in there. If we really want just one place where our side effects and our state logic is co-located, we're gonna need something different. The best way to achieve this is with xState. Here I've created a toggle machine in the stately editor. What this does is it starts in the toggle off state and when it receives the toggle event, just like our reducer, it goes into the toggling on state. When it receives fetch complete, it goes into toggled on and then you can repeat the process to toggle the machine off again. In the top right, I can press export and then this will copy this machine and it's ready to go into my code base. So back into our code now, we're calling create machine instead of initializing a reducer. We're passing the same event type into create machine as we had before and the states have all been created, toggled off, toggled on, toggling on, toggling off. In each toggling state, so toggling on or toggling off, we have this invoke here and this invokes the fetch data service. We've implemented this down here. This looks much the same as it did before. We fetch some data and then we send that data back to the machine. This is how our state used to be represented with a toggled Boolean and an is loading Boolean. You'll notice that the bits down here are complaining because the new state coming from the machine doesn't match that state. We don't need these Booleans anymore because we're now representing them with finite states. So I've changed these to use state.matches to match the different states that we have. That means we don't need to manually keep track of these toggled or is loading booleans anymore. It's handled for us. We do need somewhere to put this data and I'm gonna put it inside context here. That means I can access it down here on state.context.data. I'm gonna assign this to context whenever we grab it from the fetch complete and the implementation looks like this. So our component now looks pretty dumb. You know, there's not much going on here. All it's doing is it's just paying attention to state and sending events back up to the machine. Our machine has grown in size, but it's now representing all of the different states our component can be in, and it's handling the effects as part of that machine too. This is exactly what we set out to achieve. You can co-locate your state logic and your effects all together, and then make your component completely dumb. We even get this beautiful diagram at the end of it that we can use to explain the code to others or understand what it means when we look at it again in the future. So not only is this box a single place where you can look at all the logic for your component, it's also visualizable and self-documenting, meaning that however complex it gets, you can always just look at it and understand what's going on. So how should you decide which of these approaches to take? Well, if you think your component is gonna stay small and you don't mind it being quite smart in the actual JSX, then you should use useState. If you want to co-locate all the logic together, but you don't really have that many side effects to worry about, then use reducer might be the way to go. If you do have some side effects, then maybe use reducer with effects might be the way to go. But for complex components, for things where you have multiple side effects, many, many different states to worry about, and anything above that, X state will handle and it will handle it in a way where it eats it for breakfast. Thank you so much for watching. You should follow us on Twitter if you're not already and you should subscribe to this channel because we've got a lot more X state videos coming and hope you enjoy it.